Well, I'm Dave Hula from Rimwood Farms. You know, our home operations there in Charles City and you know, just a long time corn grower. We just had some success, you know, just grazing corn. Well, when I think about when we started planting, Kim, you know, we had a perfect planting season. I mean, corn coming up, screaming, you know, we're just like, all right, we got things knocked out. And then come wheat harvest time, you know, it started drying up, then no rain during wheat harvest, and then we just hadn't had rain. Now, you know, we're standing in the irrigated field today, but there we went almost two months without any measurable rain. Now we got blessed to have some rain here recently, but you know, that's only helping our double crop beans and our beans. Corn is pretty much done from a standpoint of making kernels. We might make a few of them heavier, you know, but irrigated corn, we're getting a lot of sunlight. You know, that's the cool thing. Now, the other thing that we've really stressed on this year is temperatures. You know, here we are, we're just sweating like crazy now, Miss Kim, but it's, you know, hot days, but the night times, you know, when you're waking up and it's 72, 76, 84 degrees in the morning, corn plant wants to slow down and it's not slowing down, so it's not transpiring very well. We're just growing from one stage to the next so fast. The other side is that no rain, there's not any disease really. Okay. You know, we were worried about some earlier, but then all of a sudden without that rain, I'm not seeing much but yet we're still kind of being proactive because we know that there's gonna be some disease pressure coming up at some point in time. Well, you know, at part of Total Acre, and I think most growers should have a plan. You know, if, if, if you just go out there and you plant your crop and then we'll see scout and, you know, we make an observation and then make an application. Well, let's come up with a plan. Say, all right, if we, this, raise the corn is nothing but numbers. If you want a 300 bushel crop, it takes so many pounds of corn. You just do the math backwards and fertility. But then there comes specific times in which a grower has to focus on, well, am I going to have some disease? Is there any going to disease going to move in? Am I in an environment where I'm corn behind corn? So we have certain things in total acre called must do's and you know some of those are making applications earlier if they haven't used certain chemistries uh, and then when we get to like what we say when the last time a sprayer can get across the field they got to make a decision are they going to pick up a phone and call somebody or are they going to do it themselves and if they're going to do it themselves you know they have to have the equipment to get across the field so let's wait and do it when you know there's the leaf that we want to protect is at least out there. Sure. So we look at that and then, you know, it's just monitoring crop. You know, we have a software program called YMS. Mm -hmm. You know, they're putting in tissue sample data, then also they're putting in scouting information and then they can make some good decisions. And then with any group, when you have a lot of farmers across the country, they start communicating. I never was a believer that farmers would talk to each other, but good golly, we can't get them to be quiet <laughs> to talk about what we're trying to accomplish. So they're seeing, hey, if a guy further south has got disease, then, you know, they're talking. I was out in Illinois and Wisconsin. I mean, there's tar spot already out there. You know, I've seen some gray leaf spot. We're seeing rust come in. So that network of communication, guys can be on top. So they cannot just be reactive, they can be preventative. Well, I, th I think back, Kim, we, we had one of those really blessed years where uh, 2011 or 12, we averaged 49 bushels our entire corn crop. So there was no blessing there. That was just sheer drought. But people had given up the corn because their corn crop looked tremendous up to about the 1st of July. Then it didn't rain. We had temperatures like this, stayed hot, and but we still didn't get any rain. Well, one of the things I took advantage of is like, you know, this was pre-Veltima days. Now we're talking, what, headline yeah. days. So it's like, hey, we knew and we heard about this ethylene reduction, help keep the plant stay green. We made applications out there. You know, aerial applicators like, really? Like, yep, we got, we're on a focus, we're on a mission. The difference is we kept our plant green three weeks longer than any of my neighbors. 
If we'd have got that rain, we'd have been a genius, but unfortunately we didn't get it. So, it, you know, it didn't really cost us money because we still had enough, rev enough grain to at least pay for the chemistry. But if we'd have got that rain and that crop being green and waiting for that rain. So we're in this different environment now where we've just been hot early and we've had these hot time, nighttime temperatures. We kind of went with that same train of thought evaluating the crop all right are we going to have silks and tassels at the same time you know are we going to have that chance to reproduce without rain so we made some applications particularly where we had some insect pressure like stink bugs you know that's another thing you can tank mix things together because right. you're just being more roi minded so we made some of those applications and you know again we didn't get the rain but on irrigated corn you know we're still pushing forward even though we've had the heat and you know, doing temperature, canopy temperature, we're keeping it cooler where we're making those uh, applications. Hopefully next time we get together it won't be so hot in this well, game. Maybe so. We'll see what we can do. <laughs>